I'm going off the previous tutorial in which I went through creating a new Drupal installation um, and what we did was we created a new website called Business. Now this is pretty much where we got up to so I'm logged in as admin um, and I've got my default Bartik theme enabled. Now if you click on appearance in your toolbar you'll actually see that you've got a couple of themes there already. So enabled theme is Bartik Disabled ones, Garland 7 and Stark. Now these are just the default ones that come with your fresh Drupal installation. Well, what I want to do, however, is install a new theme. I don't want to use any of the ones that are already there. So the best way to do this is go to the drupal.org website, click on themes and do a search for the type of theme you're going for. So if I wanted a sort of dark theme, I'm going to type in dark theme, click on search. And as you can see, I've got a number of results here. It actually tells you on the side as well, themes. Um, and I've got a few that I can actually pick out of. So I'm going to click on Dark Elegant. And with most themes, you've got a screenshot there to see what it actually looks like. And I rather like this one. It tells me the features that this theme has. Um, and it also tells me the most important thing is that it's available to download for version 7. Because we're using version 7 of Drupal, we're going to need a compatible theme to work with as well. So if you do like this theme, click on zip and download the zip file. Have a look at some of the other themes as well and download about two more themes. All right, guys, now I'm guessing that you've downloaded a couple of themes to use. Um, now, what you need to do with those downloads is actually extract the zip files. And as you can see here, I've extracted three different types. I've got business responsive, dark elegant, and I've got elegant theme. Okay, now when you extract them, you just have the file name and the files within there. Okay, it's the same with each one. Now, what I'm going to do is copy each one of those. So business, dark elegant, and elegant theme. I'm going to copy those. And this is important. What you need to do is go into your new website. So I'm going to go to HT Docs Business. That's the fresh Drupal installation we installed in the previous tutorial. Now, if you have a look within the business folder, you've got a themes folder. Okay. It's important that you don't paste your new themes in this themes folder. That's not where we're working from. What you need to do is go into sites, all themes, and paste them in this file here. So there are my new um, themes that I'm going to work with. It doesn't mean I won't have the other ones available. Those are available by default in this themes folder. And if I click on that there, you can see that they're listed there. Okay, but I don't want to use those ones that come with the installation. I'm downloading my own. I'm going to sites, all themes, and I'm putting those in this folder. Now, once you've done that, we can actually go into our website. So go to localhost forward slash business or whatever your website name is. Click on appearance. And you'll see that I've got a bunch of new themes. My responsive theme, dark elegant theme, and elegant theme. Okay, and I've still got the other ones that came with your Drupal installation. Okay, now spend a few minutes just enabling each one of these themes individually, having a play around with each one, seeing what they look like, um, and deciding which theme you're actually going to use. Now to enable a theme, all you have to do is click on the enable and set default. So if I do that, You can see that under enabled themes, it's showing that my business responsive theme is now enabled. So I'm just going to close this and give it a moment to refresh. And there we have it. That's my new theme. Now, you do the same thing with the other ones. So if you want to check out a new one, just click on enable and set to default and then have a look at what your website looks like. All right, guys, so I'm guessing you've had a play around and you've decided which theme you prefer. Now, we're not going to use that specific theme. What we're going to do is create a copy of it, um, basically a sub theme. And what a sub-theme does is it inherits the properties from the base theme, the base theme being the original theme. Now, for this to work, what we're going to need to do is have the original theme and the new one that we created both sitting in the themes folder. So let's get started with creating a sub-theme. Inside my sites or themes folder, I've got my business responsive theme, which is the one I've decided to use. The easiest way to do this is basically just copy the entire folder and paste it again. So now I've got two business responsive themes. What I'm going to do is rename the copy okay, and I'm going to call it simple site. 
Now it inherits everything from the previous one because we've just copied and pasted it. Now that we've got our simple site, what we need to do is modify a few things within that folder. Now, when you create a website, you need to make sure that the .info file name matches the name of your theme. Okay, so the name of my theme is actually simple site, which means that my .info file will need to be called simple site.info. So I'm just going to rename that as well. Now that info file name matches my folder name. Another thing that we're going to do is we're pretty much going to delete everything. So if I go into fonts, JavaScript, I'm going to delete the license, media CSS, readme text. Um, I'm going to delete the templates page as well, theme settings, template.php. Um, so just delete all of those. I'm keeping my fab icon, which is the icon that shows up in your tab. Reason being because we'll create our own one later and we'll just replace this file. I'm going to keep the screenshot as well, which is what shows up under appearance here. So that's the screenshot. So when I finish my new theme, I'm going to replace the screenshot as well. Um, so it reflects the new theme. Simple site info, we're going to need to keep that, but just modify a few things. And your style.css. I'm going to keep my images folder. Um, reason being because some of these images have been used within the theme. Um, and I might want to keep those images there, but I might just replace the files um, so that the images look slightly different later. If I decide not to use them, I can always delete it. Next, what we need to do is edit our .info file so that it reflects the type of website we're creating. So I'm going to open that up in Dreamweaver. And as you can see, it's got a name, which is business responsive theme. I'm going to change that to simple site. This doesn't have to match your folder. It doesn't have to match your info file name. This name is the one that appears here inside Drupal. So you want to make it look good. Okay, so I renamed that. Description, I can actually delete the description there and put in my own. So a very simple theme for a simple site. Core is going to stay as version 7. Okay, and we're going to keep engine PHP template. What I'm going to delete though is the style sheet media.css and the JavaScript because remember how I deleted those files before? So I don't want to refer to them when they don't actually exist. Regions. Now I'm not going to change the regions. The regions are just the different structural elements within your page um, that you can assign content to. So we're going to keep those there. I am going to delete all these features, settings, everything from that point onwards. I just want to keep my regions. There's one more thing we need to do. Now, because this is a sub theme, which is copying or inheriting the properties from the original business theme, what I'm going to do is put in base theme equals, and you need to make sure you refer to the original theme, which is business responsive theme.info. So I might just copy and paste that so I don't make any typos. There we go, business responsive theme. That's basically saying, look, this is a new theme, but it's inheriting all the properties from the base theme, which is business responsive theme. I'm going to save that. And I'm going to refresh this page. If we scroll down, simple site should now show up. There we are. I'm going to enable and set that to default. Okay, and if I close this here, you can see it looks pretty much the same. Okay, That's why we need to refer to the base theme. If you don't do that, it'll actually lose all its formatting. In this new theme that I've actually created, I don't have anything which identifies the structural elements. I've got the style sheet, which actually maintains the look and the feel of it there, but I don't have my default page.tpl file, and that's the one which looks at the structural elements of the website. So let's go back into business responsive theme click on templates and you can see that you've got your page.tpl.php. I'm actually going to copy that across as well and I'm going to create a new folder inside my new theme calling it templates and I'll paste that page tpl template in there. Okay, I'm just copying across whatever I want to use and slightly modify. Everything else that's going to stay the same is in the default theme so I won't touch that. Okay. But all these things I'm going to change. Now, if I refresh my Drupal website, again, it still looks the same. Now what you can actually do 
you have actually created a sub theme, but you can't actually tell the difference between the original theme and the sub theme. So let's open up the style.css and let's just make some really basic changes just so we can see that we're working with a sub theme. Okay, now I'm going to go down to style HTML tags and for the body at the moment, the background's set to white. So I might just change that to black and save it. If I go back to the website, and refresh it, it's changed the background to black. So I know that I've successfully created a sub theme and then I can make modifications to the style sheet and they'll be implemented in the website. The advantage of creating a sub theme is that you don't have to create everything from scratch. I've got a style sheet here to work with. All I have to do is modify it. You will have to actually have an understanding of CSS to modify it. If you don't, it's okay because most of these are pretty self-explanatory such as font family, background, color. If there is something that you don't know, this is probably a really good way to learn rather than starting everything from scratch. Now all you have to do is basically modify this style CSS page, get it looking the way you want. Every time you make a change, refresh your site to see how it actually looks. And once you've made enough modifications to it, you've basically created a whole new theme. And that's it. That's how you create a sub theme.